Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. I was about to make my own screw chuck, but then at the Utah Wood Turning Symposium, I met Bert from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, who showed me this cute little screw chuck. It is a piece of aluminum with a standard square drive screw up here so that it can be replaced when they break, because they nearly always will, but it is held in place by a square drive bit, both also held by a little set screws. Kind of cute little dry, uh, chuck, if you will. It mounts into a standard chuck so that it can be exchanged very easily. So then, what project do I use for this to try this thing out? Well, I decided to make an apple. But since I grew up on a fruit form and we had apples, I know that it is a rare apple that is perfectly solid red. So I worked very hard with this apple to actually make it variegated and show the differences that commonly appear on an apple. So this is the project that I'll use to try out this screw chuck. But uh, that aside, uh, do you happen to know what is worse than taking a bite out of an apple and finding a worm in the apple? It's finding a half a worm in the apple. So let's make this apple. This wood is hard maple from a baseball bat billet. It is dry now and slightly distorted. I've cut off a piece from the billet and mounted it in my shark jaws. Since it does not fit well, the live center is great insurance. Cut a short tenon on the end and I'm ready to move on. Now that the wood is reversed, I still keep the live center in place for a little longer. It is still good insurance. I'm now starting to form my apple shape with a spindle gouge. This is not a perfect sphere, so I'm only going by eye until I see an apple shape forming. Then sand up through the grits before drilling a small mounting hole. While I still have the apple mounted, I'm going to starting to apply color. My vision of an apple has a variation in color, reds, yellows, greens, and spots. So to start with, I'm striping reds and some green onto the apple. Starting with red, my view of an apple's predominant color. I'm applying dye with a cotton swab. I'm following up with some green dye. Then sand off a lot of the color with fine sandpaper. I also try to blend the colors somewhat by rubbing with a paper towel soaked in alcohol. Next, I'm reversing the apple onto the screw chuck. I have a small plywood disc at the base of the apple to stabilize this large of a turning. Now I can turn off the mounting tenon. Now I can add some more color from this end, then sand back the color a little more. With the richer color cut back and smeared, I'm spraying on yellow dye for background color. It will not change the red and green much, then some more red. Then I noted some scratches on the surface and sanded that area again before spraying on more red. Then sand it again before spraying with rattle can lacquer. Since I already had a hole from the screw chuck, I'm reusing it to hang the apple while I spray on more rattle can lacquer. I like my apple. It has a variation of color between red, green, yellow, and black almost like the apples from our farm when I was very young. For me, it was good practice with dyes. It looks good enough to take a bite out of it, but I will refrain. This apple was fun. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns.